So I'm Roger Mugford. I'm a qualified psychologist, clinical psychologist, so but with an interest in the human-animal relationship. So, so my clientele vary from homeless people living under the arches in, in London to kings, queens, presidents uh, uh, and posh people uh, like the Queen of England. Queen Elizabeth is a client of mine from way back. Uh, Her Majesty the Queen is a fantastic dog trainer. She's been around and amongst animals, horses, dogs, you think of, since the dawn of time, if you like, since childhood. And she's very knowledgeable, obviously very knowledgeable about uh, her race horses and her uh, corgis. But she also at Sandringham has other dogs, uh, Labradors, Spaniels. And when I visited her, uh, she had nine dogs uh, and they were incredibly well controlled, well managed. And of course, the question is, well, why did she need me to come in? It's because there were occasional fights between members of her pack. So uh, one dog in particular, Chippy, was picking fights with another dog. And uh, of course, all dog fights are really scary. And it's the sure-fired way to be bitten, separating dogs, having a, a good fight. She's very cutting about um, the, the people who had not been sympathetic, empathetic to her dogs. Uh, for, for instance, one anecdote arose when the uh, late Lyndon Johnson was famous because on the front cover of Time magazine, he's pictured picking up his beagle dog by its ears. The Queen took a particularly dim view of Lyndon Johnson and so she kept him waiting for 40 minutes um, <laughs> as sort of to let it be known that um, she didn't approve of his the way he treated his dogs. I, I, I met and worked with the Queen's dogs at Windsor, where at that time she spent most of her time, and now of course is entirely living at Windsor. Uh, and when she commuted from Buckingham Palace, which is 20, 30 miles uh, east of Windsor, she would drive herself with her numerous dogs in some beat up old uh, anonymous looking Vauxhall car. Uh, with all her dogs in the back of the car. So she is a very hands-on, inverted commas, ordinary pet owner who is just as level as you or me. And, and, and I repeat, just like the homeless people or the poor people or the people in third world countries who also love their dogs. And you know, I spend a lot of time in South Africa uh, with really poor people in the townships and and their love is the same love that I have for dogs and that the Queen of England has for her dogs. I've been very focused on corgis because my first dog was a corgi called Rusty. So I think all corgis can do no harm. But in reality, um, all dogs have their special features. Um, and what's interesting is that the first dog to which you were exposed, the first breed, tends to be the breed you become imprinted on. So in the case of the royal family, of course, it was Corgis, the, the then Princess Elizabeth. Um, her first dog, I think when she was four or five years old, was a, a, a Corgi puppy. And she's remained loyal to Corgis for all of her life. Corgis are shrunken versions of working border collies. So the Vikings introduced them and they're the, this family called Spitz breeds, S-P-I-T-Z, Spitz breeds. Um, and they're working dogs, and in their native Wales, of course, they're used to herd cattle. And their particular herding technique is to nip at the ankles of a cow that was walking too slowly. And uh, as the cow would naturally kick the dog, uh, and being low on the ground, they can duck the kick from the cow. Uh, whereas a border collie or a bigger dog would be in the face. And they're very skillful herding dogs and they need some training, working um, purpose in life to be happy corgis. So they're not just show dogs, they're not just regular little pet dogs, but they're uh, dogs that are as intelligent as a border collie and, and need some purpose in life.